So about a year ago, we took delivery of this 39 contender here behind us. And when we first received the boat, we were very excited. We gave you guys a brief walkthrough. However, here we are a year later, we've done a ton of traveling from the Bahamas to Key West to the Dry Tortugas. And of course, we've done a lot of fishing down here in the Florida Keys. Now, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna give you a full walkthrough just because when we first got the boat, we wanted to give ourselves time to learn the ins and out and see what the boat was really all about before we gave you guys a fair and honest opinion. But I wanna thank Be Happy Boating for sponsoring this week's video. So let's go ahead, let's hop in the boat. Let's see what it's all about. Now we see that these center console boats keep on getting bigger and bigger. Some people desire bigger boats, some people desire smaller boats. However, this was just perfect for us. Reason why is because it has a 500 mile range. Therefore, we can travel 500 miles in this boat without refueling, which was perfect for us because we do a lot of travel boating. Now, keeping in mind that this is a travel boat, it's a very big boat. So, God forbid we were to be in a situation away from home where things got nasty very quickly. This boat's gonna keep us more comfortable and it's going to allow us to drive through those heavier seas a little bit quicker per se if we were in a smaller boat. Now, of course we are up here in the bow, so let's go ahead and just talk about everything that's going on up here. And this is a hardcore fishing platform, so there really isn't too much going on up here. And the reason why is because this is meant for fishing. There's absolutely no obstruction up here we can move freely around the boat in order to move and follow that fish and do what we have to do. You'll see a lot of center console boats nowadays with forward seating. Forward seating is fantastic. It's perfect for the family. However, for us, we don't spend too much time in the boat while we're at the sandbar and we're typically running around at pretty high speeds. So therefore we decided to opt out of the forward seating. Now, since we're up here, Let's go ahead and talk about this massive fish box right here. This is amazing. We've had yellowfin tunas in here. We've had swordfish in here. We have had mahi, just about any fish you could imagine putting in a hardcore fishing platform has been up in this box. And the reason why is because it is a massive box. And that is something that is very important when you want a hardcore fishing boat. Also, if you want a travel boat. Another thing you'll notice is we have this grab handle that goes all the way to midship. Say for example, you're running up to a mahi or a showering sailfish. This is gonna give you the ability to hold on all the way up to the bow. Now we're moving a little further back, but before we start talking about everything here, just wanna talk about the gunnels real quick. Something that contenders started doing on some of their newer models is they started making the gunnels a bit thinner. So the fact that we have more room with these thinner gunnels is something that's awesome, especially when we're going from bow to stern. But let's go ahead and talk about this area right here. And when we were building the boat, I was seeing a lot of boats with this coffin box lounge option. And I thought it was a no brainer to put it here on this boat, just because it butts right up against the console. It creates a nice lounger. And in my honest opinion, this is one of the best seats in the house because you can put your feet up and you can lean back up against the console. Something that's great about Contenders Design, the way that they did this coffin box, is if you wanna get anything inside of here, rather than telling whoever's sitting here to get off, you can just say, hey, move over real quick. I need to grab something and you can just lift up on the side rather than lifting the entire coffin box lid up. And it's also divided, so you can separate things if that's what you desire to do. Another thing that's great, it's more storage. Like I said, we do a lot of traveling in this boat, so therefore the more storage, the better. Now this also lifts up on a linear actuator on a switch that's there on the console. So there's even more storage and it's another insulated fish box. So if you wanna carry more ice, you can do so by flipping the switch and this entire coffin box will lift up on an actuator. Now beside the coffin box, we have even more storage and we have a mirroring hatch on the other side, of course, but something that I like about these boxes is they're long enough to store fishing rods. So if you're staying at a place where you're not too sure about leaving your gear at overnight, you can stow your rods away. These are also big enough to fit gaffs, spear guns, dive gear, and of course more storage if you decide to do some traveling to the Bahamas. 
Now we're gonna move up here to the console and this is Contender's M series console. There's a lot of things I like about this console. Number one, if we notice, all of the connections for the T-top are up off of the floor. Now the reason why this is great is because as you're walking by, there's nothing to run into and there's nothing to stub your toes on. It also just gives it a very clean look, which is something that I like. I really like simplicity in boats, so this really simplifies things and it just looks great. Another thing you'll notice is it's very narrow in the front. However, when we move back, the console actually gets a little bigger, so therefore we have a nice big face to mount really big electronics, and that bigger console in the rear is also going to keep everyone dry that's behind it if it were to start raining or you were to get in some really nasty seas. Another thing that I really like about the M-Series console is you'll notice how the eyes and glass is rounded and you may think to yourself well why is that a nice touch i like it because it's more aerodynamic number one and number two when it comes to cleaning up the boat drying everything off at the end of the day it's very easy to just go from here to here wipe across like that and those are just little things that i like that make things easier when it comes to maintaining the boat now we also have this very large console door on the m series console and basically what happens is is this door moves out and moves forward so it just gives you that much more room to move and get inside of this console. Another thing that's great about the actual door coming forward is if it were to swing out we wouldn't be able to move by but the fact that it moves forward we can still get by just in case we need to do so but at the same time we have this cut out here so it gives us a little extra headroom to go ahead get inside of the console and step down. And something that you'll notice, more storage. The more storage you have, the better. This is an extra little hatch where all of our batteries live. And what's great about this is it keeps your batteries tucked away out of the elements. And it's just a nice little clean finish that Contender does just to keep those batteries out of the way. And then we have another hatch up top here. And you can just see inside of this console how clean all the wiring is we have a lot of amplifiers in this boat because we have a very extravagant stereo system and there's a reason for that just because a lot of the times when we're at the sandbar we park the boat far away from the beach we crank up the stereo so we can still hear it because a lot of the times we get into places that are really shallow where the boat can't reach so we have that extravagant stereo just so the music can reach to where we are at an option that we decided to go ahead and outfit this T-top with was some speaker pods. Reason why is just because when you're at the sandbar, you're in the water, kind of just frees up the stereo and it just makes everything sound that much better. And another thing that's really cool, Contender lets you decide how many rod holders you want to go ahead and put on your T-top. And we decided to just load this up because we're always bringing a lot of rods now, another thing to note is when you are building a fishing boat, you always want somewhere in the middle of the boat to store your rods, whether it's on the side of the console, your leaning post, the T-top, just because you never want to stick fishing rods in your rod holders on the actual gunnels of your boat unless you have to. Now, the reason why you want to do that is because when you're moving around the boat, you want to make sure there's absolutely no obstruction. So we have plenty of rod holders in the center of the boat where they're out of the way and they're not a potential obstruction. Now I told myself if we were ever going to be building another boat, it was going to have to have an open array radar. Reason why is because when we're running back and forth from the Bahamas, I wanna make sure that we're able to track storms. That way we're staying as safe as possible. Another thing that's great about open array radar is you can track birds very clearly. And we track birds a lot whenever we're fishing, especially over in the Bahamas when we're yellowfin tuna fishing. Lastly, if you were to be running at night, you could track other boats on the radar. Therefore, you don't have to worry about having a potential collision. 
Now, when we were laying out the console, I wanted to make sure that we could get the biggest screens we could possibly get for multiple reasons. Number one, because when we're navigating through the Bahamas, I wanna make sure that my charts are very big, clear right there in front of my face, just so I do not mess up. Now, another thing that's great about these bigger screens is when we're bottom fishing, what we can do is we can put this sonar on, and it's so big to the point where if I'm in the back of the boat, I can still see the sonar nice and big up here on the screen so I don't have to go from stern back up here to the console back and forth just to see what's going on on the bottom. Another thing that's great about having bigger screens, when you go to give the screen a command, everything is much bigger so when you tap, you're a lot more likely to hit what you're actually trying to tap on versus a smaller screen where you kind of have to pinpoint and be a little more accurate. So those are all the reasons why we went with such big screens. We went with two screens just because if we are in the Bahamas, we're somewhere away from home and we were to lose one unit, we will still have a second if we actually need it. Now moving down a little further, we have autopilot. For those of you that aren't familiar with autopilot, you can put in a command on the chart and autopilot is going to drive the boat wherever you want it to go. However, you should always be paying attention whenever you're using autopilot. Little disclaimer there, but autopilot is an absolute game changer, something we use whenever we're going on long range trips because we can just sit up here in the helm chairs, sit back, relax, and worry about absolutely nothing. We have our VHF radio, Apollo head unit, Bifusion, steering wheel, trim tab switches, nothing too crazy there. Now we're gonna move back here to the leaning post and this was something that I had a lot of fun designing because we spend so much time here behind the console and this is where I spend majority of my time. So it was very important that we designed something that I was going to be as comfortable as possible in and that my family could sit up here and we could all be comfortable at the same time. So LeBrock seats were a no brainer. What's great is they put these on linear actuators so they slide forward and back just to get that perfect adjustment. We have storage beneath here, which is fantastic for keys, phones, wallets, tackle, whatever it may be. I even stick my drone in here sometimes, which is great. Now we absolutely loaded this leaning post up with rod holders. When you're out there fishing, you can never have enough rod holders. And of course, you can never have enough cup holders as well. Cup holders are great because you can put hooks, lures, whatever it may be inside of them. This is a little touch that Contender does, nice little grab handle. So the fact that a couple guys can get behind here, hold on whenever we're doing 70 miles an hour, it's always great to have something to hang on to. Now, below this, we have our tackle station. A lot of guys, they like to put sea deck on here and they like to use this as a rigging table. I like keeping things nice and clean. However, if you do need somewhere to rig or you would like a table, this is a great option to do so. We also have storage underneath there, big enough to keep tackle boxes, wahoo lures, de-hookers, pliers, gloves, whatever it may be, leaders. This is where we put majority of our tackle just because it's so easy to open and close and they're nice big boxes, which are perfect. Another thing that's great, this is an option we decided to go with. This is a slide out cooler. However, majority of the time, we just keep it out just because we're big on staying hydrated. We wanna make sure that we can get a water nice and easily out of the cooler. Not to mention the cooler is massive, so it's big enough to keep food and drinks for all the guys or girls that are gonna be on the boat for the day. It's also nice because I can sit down here, get into my tackle drawers, grab what I need, and this is actually where I spend a lot of my time rigging is right here. Everything is right here in arm's reach, and this is absolutely perfect when it comes to fishing. However, also great for sunscreen, flip flops, whatever you wanna store away, get to very quickly. This is one of my favorite places to store things. Now, before we move on, I wanna inform you guys on behalf of Be Happy Boating. Be Happy Boating offers what's called an extended warranty, in other words, an extended service contract. Be Happy Boating covers major and minor components like engines, lower units, electronics, fuel systems, and just about anything mechanical that were to fail for up to 10 years. Now this 39 Contender is a new boat, but for us, it's a travel boat and hardcore fishing platform. So at some point, something is gonna break. 
Now, if you're new to boating, you may not be aware of how fast repair costs can add up. Unfortunately, when it's something major, you have to pay to play, where an extended warranty may be something to consider. However, even if you're a seasoned boater, Be Happy Boating offers coverage on boats up to 20 years old. If an extended warranty is something you think you would be interested in, visit www.behappyboating.com. Click get a quote and a no obligation quote is emailed to you. Underneath we have under gunnel rod storage and this is something that's important because this is going to keep our gaffs tucked away. Gaffs are something that we need to get to very quickly sometimes so the fact that we can just get them very close in arm's reach, pull them out, gaff a fish, that's something that was huge that we had to add on to the boat. Now we also have two very large insulated fish boxes here on the floor and whenever we're fishing down here in the keys we will just load these up these are perfect for tunas mutton snappers groupers kingfish we actually had a wahoo in there the other day so they're plenty big enough for a simple day out fishing now the fact that these are insulated as well we can also store food and drinks whenever we're running over to the Bahamas or we're just doing a sandbar day. So these also act as coolers. Remember, anything that's insulated will also be a cooler. So the more room we have for drinks, the more room we have for food, obviously the better. Now lastly, on the floor here, we have this bilge and it's finished, which is absolutely fantastic. Looks great. We have our pump box down in here, our fuel filters, all of our shutoff valves for our fuel tanks. It's also great for storage as well. More storage, the better. This is something that is very, very important to us down in South Florida. We do a lot of live bait fishing and we have two live wells here in the transom where personally I believe every live well should be. The reason why is because when you're throwing the cast net or you're loading up on bait, if you're sabiking, you can lean right up here against the gunnel, bring your baits over the side, de-hook, or if we're throwing the cast net, we walk down the gunnel. As I mentioned earlier, there's no obstruction, so we can walk from bow to stern, take the cast net, lift it up, go straight into the live well. Now, you can also do floor wells on this boat. You can do live wells up in the bow. However, these two live wells were just good enough for us. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wish I would've done a floor well, but we also have a connection here where we can run an above deck well if we really wish to do so. You also notice that we decided to go with clear lids. I've seen a lot of the times when you open up lids on boats that are not clear, once you open up the lids, the baits kind of freak out and they go crazy and ultimately they're gonna beat themselves up. They're not gonna last as long. Something we did here is we put this little rod holder in between the live wells. This is perfect for a bait net or if you wanna run fishing rod right here while you're trolling, but that's something that should be pretty important whenever you're building a fishing boat with live wells in the transom. So there's a couple different things I wanna talk about here and I wanna start from the top, work my way down and then towards the back. What's great is we got to choose exactly where we wanted to put our rod holders on these gunnels. And you would think a rod holder is pretty standard. However, we have three different rod holder options going on here. We have our standard rod holder and then we have a rod holder that also doubles as a cup holder. So when we're back here at the cooler and we wanna put a drink right here, we can do that if these are all taken. And then right here, we have a swivel rod holder. Now, what the swivel rod holder allows us to do when we have a bent butt rod inside of this rod holder, it's going to allow the rod to sway side to side. So when we're fighting a fish like a yellowfin tuna or we're fighting a swordfish, rather than holding the rod and moving it, this rod holder is going to allow the entire rod and reel to swivel from side to side. The fact that it's underneath the T-top was something that was important. Also, when I'm right here at the helm, I can see exactly what's going on right here. We also have an electric reel plug right underneath the rod holder. Another great option, building a custom boat. You can go ahead and decide what you want and where you wanna put certain things, whether it's a swivel rod holder, cup holder rod holder, a plug to power your electric reel. If you see what we have going on below here, Huge shout out to Gus Toy Box here in Key Largo. We actually built the boat with him and Virgil and of course his dad, Norbert. 
I saw him put the stainless steel contender logo on one of his 44s and I told him I had to have it on our boat. So he went ahead and hooked us up. Now, this is a very large door, very easy to get in and out, very functional. And then we also have a ladder right below this door so we can climb in and out very easily. Every single cleat on the boat is a pop-up cleat, so that way when we're not using it, everything is out of the way. It's unobstructed, nothing to catch line or catch the cast net on. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about power. And this is something that was difficult for us when we were building this boat, just because there is a lot of great power options out there, and it also doesn't take very much horsepower for this boat to run well. Now, here we went with the triple 400 Mercury Verados. The reason why we went with these engines is just because they're priced just right and they have the perfect power to weight ratio. And this is the best option we believe at the time when we were building this boat. We've seen 70 miles an hour on this boat. I've heard guys getting this boat up to 75 miles an hour with triple 400s. However, I've never seen that. And I think that's just because we're propped for load. We do a lot of traveling in the boat, as mentioned multiple times throughout the video. So we're typically pretty heavy and 70 miles an hour heavy is more than enough in my opinion. This boat's gonna get about one mile per gallon. On average, I've seen 1.3 light and that is absolutely fantastic for a 39 foot boat. I think a lot of that has to do with just the design the way that Contender decided to build this boat. The double step bottom has a lot to do with it. For those of you that aren't familiar with a double step bottom boat, which means it has two indentations in the bottom of the hull, which creates a pocket of air. And that air is going to equate to less wet surface. And the less wet surface you have, the less drag. The less drag you have, the more speed and the better fuel economy that you will gain. It's been a great boat for the year that we've had it. You know, Contender's been in business for a very long time and that says something about them as a company. If they've been around, they know what they're doing and they really hit a home run on this 39 and we've really, really enjoyed this boat. We look forward to you guys joining us with more videos here on Life by the Bow. We have a huge library fishing in this boat, traveling to the Tortugas, Key West, Bahamas. So if you guys are into that type of stuff or you're thinking about moving up to a boat of this caliber, I definitely suggest checking out some of those videos. But again, I want to thank Be Happy Boating for sponsoring this week's video. But until next time, see you guys then.